1984 is a film made in 1984 based on the 1949 novel 1984 by George Orwell. John Hurt plays Winston Smith, a normal guy trying to survive in a dystopian police state. It's probably one of the most important novels of the 20th century, and it's just as relevant now as it ever was. The film really does it justice. Today's math props appear in a tracking shot towards the beginning of the film. Our hero Winston works in the state's propaganda office, which has these big rows of cubicles. Each one is a little different, and you can see three different antique office machines. The first guy is using a fancy electromechanical machine, which seems to be a dirtied up Marchant Figuramatic calculator. Here's a picture of the Model 10CM, which is almost exactly the same as the prop. This is a very fancy machine that could do automatic long division and fast multiplication. I made a video about another early marcher machine. <laughs> it is basically the same. The next one is this thing. This is the only angle we ever get on it, and I'm not entirely sure what it is. It looks like it could be a Resulta type machine. I made a video about that one. If it is one of these, they must have rebuilt the outer case, or maybe it's some obscure model. Or something totally different, like an old time speaker. I don't know. And the next guy, who happens to be our main character, has this thing. It looks like a Burroughs portable adding machine with the key tops replaced with letters. See how some of the buttons are pressed down? On this machine, the buttons stay down until you turn the crank, but they took the crank off for the prop, so they're stuck down forever. 1984, the book, was written in the 1940s as a dystopian future, and the filmmakers decided to design their whole world as retro-futuristic. It's a future not of progress, but of stagnation, and these things fit perfectly into that aesthetic. One choice I really like is that there's no typewriters. It would be an obvious choice for a stagnant future to have everybody using typewriters, but I guess they wanted things to look a little more alien than that. The Marchant looks very sophisticated without seeming familiar. Almost no viewers in the 1980s would have been familiar with these high-end accounting machines. And the Burroughs keyboard turns into a weird typewriter, familiar but strange at the same time. It builds the scene perfectly. The actor with the marchant isn't really doing it right. He hammers a few buttons and then hits one more and it looks like he's done. But he's only hitting the input buttons, so he didn't actually calculate anything. If you really want the machine to do something, you gotta hit one of the buttons on the side. At least he's not hitting the same column over and over again. The two other guys never touch theirs. But that's fine. The machines here are all about world building and they do a great job. In conclusion, I give 1984 my math props rating of good. Nineteen eighty four is a 1953 American television adaptation of the novel starring the guy from Green Acres. It was broadcast live, which gives it some interesting quirks, but I wouldn't really call it good. Winston does go to work in this one, but he doesn't have anything interesting on his desk. In conclusion, I give 1984, the Green Acres version, my math props rating of bad. Nineteen eighty four is a 1954 BBC television adaptation of the novel starring Grand Moff Tarkin in one of his early breakout roles. This was also a live broadcast, but it had some pre-filmed scenes sprinkled in. It's better than the Green Acres version, and Tarkin is always great, but he's still got an empty desk. There is a wire recorder in one shot, so that's good. In conclusion, I give 1984 the Tarkin version my math props rating of bad. 1984 is a 1956 British film adaptation of the novel. See, the Tarkin version was so successful on TV that they decided to make a feature for theatrical release. Now this is a little confusing. When they wrote the script, they got the same guy who did the Green Acres version. So the script for this one is basically the same as that one. You must, you must have, have been a grown, grown man, man before I was born. I was born. You can remember what it was like. You remember the days before, before the revolution? revolution? Yeah. The oppression, you can remember the, injustice, the oppression and the injustice, poverty, and the poverty. Vaguely, vaguely, vaguely. The lead actor in this one is totally wrong. John Hurt was a defeated man, wasting away and visibly oppressed. This guy looks like George Santos. Oh yeah, there's no math props.
In conclusion, I give 1984, the George Santos version, my math props rating of bad. Nineteen eighty four is a twenty twenty three Russian language film, which is a loose adaptation of the novel. The writer and director Diana Ringo also plays the female lead. It's not good. One of the updated themes in this one is how the party wants to replace all human creativity with generative AI. That's an interesting idea, but this film itself uses tons of AI generated shots rather than traditional CGI or, you know, sets. And there's hardly any props at all. He does use an off-the-shelf Apple keyboard here, which I guess looks pretty futuristic. And the male lead in this one is a mathematician, but it sounds like the writers never met a real one. He has long Russian-style philosophical monologues. Here he says, Maybe, from a mathematical point of view, harmony and chaos are two denominators which add up to happiness. Denominators which add up? That's kind of the first thing you learn about denominators. They don't add up. Do I even got to say it? And I think that covers it. Thanks to Alan for the tip, and let me know if you see any more. <laughs>